But to wrap up, let's wrap up a few things. There's a rare line in the Shulchan Aruch, and I hope this is enough to really uh, go ahead and bring what we spoke about the last few weeks home. We talked about, you know, Shema, we're talking about Shmona Esrei, Talk about Birchas Torah. So, just one line I'd like to leave everyone with. The Shulchan Aruch writes, Birchas Torah, Sarach Lizahir Ba Meod. Birchas Torah. The brachas we say in the morning before learning, Sarach Lizahir Ba Meod. You have to be very, very careful. Now, that is a unique line. Every mitzvah you should be careful about. And he lies out been my own. There, so it's obviously something very, very important for the Torah that it's a rare word. It's a rare word used in the Shulchan Aruch. Ma'od. You have it here and there. There are three times Shulchan Aruch uses the word ma'od, ma'od. That uses that. So here there's a ma'od, ma'od. There it uses it by isurim. There's three isurim in the Torah. He uses the word in the Shulchan Aruch. He uses ma'od, ma'od. He uses it by um, men and women intermingling. You have to be extra careful in that area. Uh, by ribis, interest, interesting enough. Not taking interest. You have an easy victim. No one's going to know. You can rip the person off. No, no, no. Yes, you can make money lending to a guy. You can make interest, 20%, whatever you want there. And here you have to do it for free. It's true. It's a big gate to her. Be mit kaber. And the third one is surprising. I... Uh, yeah, interesting, you think, right? The Shulchan Aruch doesn't have Helchus Lashon Har for some interesting reason. I don't really cover it. I don't know if he just relied on the Rambam. It's an interesting study itself where the Rambam is, the Shur, Rambam covers all 613, every mitzvah possible he covers. The Shulchan Aruch just covers Allah He doesn't have Migdash, Tumut, Sarat. He doesn't have any of those things. Sanhedrin, Shulchan Aruch doesn't cover that. only things that are Halach Lamaisa 500 years ago. Truman Masi he covers. Hala he covers. Uh, he doesn't be cool him because that's bringing the Megdash. We don't have that. You'd think you'd have Hechos and Hara, and that he does. It's an interesting topic. So he doesn't have it. He's not going to say mode mode. Maybe if he would have covered, he would have said that. So he has it by Rivas interest, by men and women being extra careful about their interactions. And the third one is a judge not taking a shohat, making sure he's totally objective and there's nothing that might cause him to be biased. You have a formal shohat, he has a million dollars judged properly. You can have informal shohats too, where he has a relationship with the person, he has a natural leaning towards the person, and we have to be extra careful. So ma'od, ma'od. So that's by three low tasses, Shohanar has it. And by mitzvah tasay, Shohanar doesn't write every halach open up for hecho shma. Ma'od doesn't say ma'od every time. Obviously, Bechazot is very, very, very important. So just to bring that idea home, because sometimes people from the time that we're kids, we open up the city, we start with Bechazot Shachar, and there's that section of Shachar that sometimes gets neglected. We cannot. We cannot do that. And the Mishabur just stresses that he quotes a Shagas Aryeh that Bechazot Torah is Minat Torah, from the Torah. Okay, so just to give us a lot of pause about how serious this is. And then another beautiful point to finish off our little topic about Bechaz Torah. Lo lilmat ad do not learn until you make the bracha. Some of our and others wanted to compare it to food. You can't get the enough from food and drink until you make the bracha. So to what? You can't get the hunt on Nisbech with Divrei Sarasecha. You need to thank Hashem first for it. Praise Hashem for it. Isn't it amazing? Amazing, beautiful stuff. And say it with a lot of simcha. And now here comes a scary line. And it says in the Gemara, Alma Avda Haaretz, how did we lose Israel? Eretz Israel? They left my Torah. Okay, that's a reason to lose the uh, Eretz Israel. We don't keep the Torah. What's it worth? Amu Chazal. Shedav is initial in the Vim. They asked in the Vim, Amah of the Eretz. In the first Migdash, second Migdash, we didn't have any Vim left. Right? Second Migdash, we only had the Vim in the first 40 years of the second Migdash. And then, Machagim um, Malachi Zachariah. And then it was over. 
So, but the Nevim in the first Migdash, like, what, what happened? They would learn Torah. And he says, and as long as they were learning Torah, Vita Hashem Alavonotehem. Hashem is Vater. Okay, you're doing things wrong, but you're learning, you're anchored in Torah. At least, at least there's hope. Hashem Habokin Lava Yada Kiafa Pisha Oskim Bitora. Lo ha you oskim, they weren't learning the shame lima Torah. Elik Moshe lomdim sha chachmos. Learning Torah should be this is reality. I want to learn it, understand it, follow it, incorporate it into all into every part of my life. Velachin lo birchu birchas ha Torah. They didn't say birchas ha Torah. They didn't have the right appreciation. This is an unbelievable gift. And therefore, their protection was gone. You have to have such hodai every morning. He gave us his beautiful, beautiful gift. What a gift he gave us. And therefore, we have to be extra careful. And to wrap this up, Asher Bachabanu is Bechus Hodava Hashevach. Asher Bachabanu is Shevach Hodala Hashem. Asheki Dishanu. What is Asheki Dishanu? But some say Allah soak with the very Sora. Well, is any different? We put up the Sisha. Zanu al Mezuza. Zanu Lahadlak Neshul Shabbat. We call Lahaniyak Tvilin. A man puts on Tvilin. Asher Zanu Lahadlak Neshul Chanukah. These brachas are called what? The bracha you do before mitzvah? Berchat. Ha mitzvah. Easy enough. It's called the berchas ha mitzvah. So berchas ha mitzvah, that is one aspect of berchas ha mitzvah. It's the last sok with the very time. It's the berchas ha mitzvah aspect. And then, you have the shebach banu with shebach, hodat Hashem. And then, listen to this lavosh, another giant of the achronim. When you're learning the mitzvah, you're having the mitzvah, and you're having the hana. And therefore, habrochos hein birchos, excuse me, hanehenin. So, he says it's similar to a birchos hanehenin. You have to make a bracha before the hana. Is that crazy? Is it... But the learning, he's saying that the learning Torah is Hana. And there's an element of what? Berchas Hanani. So you have when you do Berchas Torah. I hope tomorrow morning we see Berchas It's like, wow. It's Shevach, thanks to Hashem, Shabbat Banu. Eight million, eight billion people in the world, give or take. I haven't counted, so I don't know the exact amount, but give or take. And a guy put on too? Nice question. We'll talk, about that in a, we'll talk about that in a moment. So 8 billion people in the world, you chose us. The world can't stand it. They can't stand it that we're the chosen nation. They know it, and they'll do anything and start all truths to somehow attack it. They just were a thorn in their side. They can't take it. And the brilliant people will be two-year-olds and their, and their rationality just gone out the window. Doesn't make a difference. They just can't because we are chosen. We have to know it. The world knows it. We have to know and feel and appreciate. Like, wow, he chose us. He gave us his dera to connect you, Hashem. It's unbelievable. Thank you. Hashem b'chavan, we call him him. Thank you, Hashem. Then Hashem b'chavanu is the typical b'chaz ha-mitzvah you have by every mitzvah. But ha-rev na-shem is a request that it should be so sweet and enjoyable. And then the lavush has this unbelievable idea Okay, the, it's an unbelievable idea that it is a birchas hanen, and there's an aspect of birchas hanen and of a pleasure. Wow, it's an amazing thing. That's an amazing thing. So crazy stuff, huh? And you know what? In our generation, listen, we're lucky. 
our kids and grandkids are not so lucky to be born in a generation where they have the phones and they're just like stuck to the phones and there's no mind, no development, just passivity where you watch, even if you're not, not watching horrible stuff, but many of them are, okay? But even if you're not, just even if it's a cartoon, and this is, we all watch cartoons and whatever it was in the Flintstones 50, 60 years ago. Okay, maybe you don't admit it, I admit it. Okay, so fine. You were learning Torah all day and the mitzvahs and chesed. Yes, I enjoyed the Flintstones and I enjoyed the, you know, the honeymooners and all that fun stuff. It was a lot cleaner then. Ain't no honeymooners going on today on the TV. That's for sure. They were totally dressed, Sanua. I love Lucy. They were never even said, I think they were not even allowed then in the 50s, 60s to sit on the bed together, let alone not imply anything. It was a different era totally. They wouldn't show her pregnant, I remember. When she was, she was pregnant, they wouldn't let her no. show. Herself. Unbelievable. So it was a different era. So now just to think what I can expose, but even the kosher stuff, even the sports, it's like the mind is gone. And now you want to take that same mind and get that mind to enjoy knowledge? What planet are you from? What planet? It's it's very, very hard. So it's, in my opinion, the Haredi world in this area where they, they the Haredi world did a, a better job than all the other words, in my opinion, in terms of insulating and trying to protect the generation from the smartphones and stuff like that. You're not going to have a typical Haredi world, high school boys with or high school girls with smartphones and not in the Shiva Gadolas either. And anyone who does, he's already, you know, testing the limits. But the standard one will not have, and that's a huge, huge fracha. Okay. So, but the idea that you grow up, a child is curious. All children are curious. They always want to understand things. And sometimes you can have a bad teacher, bad rabbi, bad parent that instead of praising the question, like, wow, what a question. I don't know. This is what we do. You have to put on phone and that's what we do. It's a hoax and, and don't ask. You're just squashing the kid. Or in the world of science. The kid goes ahead and uh, he's in the uh, pool, his bathtub over there with his ships and things. He's throwing things to see which sink, which ones don't sink. And it's time to get to sleep. And like, wow, this is so interesting what you're doing. We do have to get to sleep now. But wow, let me show me also what sinks and what doesn't sink, what flows. And just egg him on and just f- fuel the flame over there. Well, sometimes he'll do something a little bit naughty. He's playing with, you know, the pots and the pans and, and banging and building and stuff like that. He should be building with the Lego. So take the excitement of building and just say, you know what, my crystal, that's for my great grandmother. <laughs> Don't build with that. Like, let's go somewhere else and let's work on the Tinker Toys. I don't know if it still exists. I'll have a shalom. <laughs> Anyways, so, but take that curiosity, that search of that scientist in every kid and just, Fuel the flames and don't like squash it. But too many times it happens. I was so proud. The eighth grade rabbi just now he came from Netzach. On her grandchildren, make sure they're developing nicely. And it was great. So I, I, I it's, it's a dream job. Yeah. You know, again, I vote. It's a dream job too, but it's a lot of work. You know, principal, administration, oh, this rabbi can't come. You know, every time I get a call at 10 o'clock at night from a rabbi, I'm waiting. Shalom. <laughs> Okay, I know. I'll find the Malema come. Thank you very much. So, but over in that's just pure fun. Just going into class, 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 five, ten minutes in every single class in the school. I get to everyone between Sunday and Thursday. This is a dream job. So I was in the eighth grade. And then I was in the next class, you know, everything is much to the minute, every seven, eight, nine, ten minutes in a different class. And then I went to the next class, and the baby comes running in after me. Can you come back in? And they asked him a question, and he wasn't sure. And instead of like putting them down, he like questions. It's question from he pulled me in, and then we're discussing it together. Did you know the answer to the question? I did, but I just made something up, you know. Ah, <laughs> Vishalom. <laughs> 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 Vishalom. Anyways, but for the Rebbe to go ahead and say that's a good question. Wow, I'm not sure. Let's discuss it with another rabbi. Do you know what kind of gift that is that he gave them? It's unbelievable that thirst for knowledge. That's great. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Let me let me talk to you. Do you know what kind of gift that is? We could give that to our kids the thirst for knowledge and that curiosity. And I don't know, but who cares? I don't know. Let's 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 pursue this. So that is such a crucial part 
of our development of helping kids out, but help ourselves too, that child, that child curiosity. That's why one of my favorite words, I have no doubt that I said this before, but I cannot repeat it enough, where Yehuda says, when he says to who he thinks is the king, but it's really his brother Yosef, how do I go up to my father Yaakov and this child, Binyam is not with me, the void, it's not shot, it's a beautiful one who gave it over. How to go to my father in heaven and my now, my youthfulness, my excitement, my passion for life and discovery is not with me. How do I go up when I'm 80, 90, 100? Who cares how old you are? Running marathons, you're not running marathons, who cares? Are you excited about life and about the gifts that gave Hashem gave you, both the Torah gift and just the world and science and physics? And yeah, it's, it should be such an excitement. And if we do develop that way and we help people that we're exposed to, whether it's children, neighbors, friends, whoever it is, then and only then can you go ahead and say, Yivarech Osav B'Simcha Gedola. You start the morning and you say those words and you think about the fact that you're thanking Hashem for choosing us. You're giving us a derech to connect to you. And you say the Bechaz HaMitzvah out of any standard. And there's even a Hana part of it. Point to Lavosh. There's an enjoyment. Wow. A new idea. You ask a question and he gives an answer. And then this one, oh, wait, what is Mishle and what Tanakh and whatever you're drawn to. Each one is drawn to different things. So that's amazing. So Be'er HaSatorah should be mamish an experience every morning. It really should be. It should be a very special part of our day. Now I'm talking to myself. Don't just always give Musa. They say, oh, I'm talking just to myself. You can listen in. We don't mean it. We're giving you Musa. But there are times that I, we really mean it. Like over here, my come on, I need to work. So I say working fun, just to myself, I am. But I hope that tomorrow morning, I hope tomorrow morning, when I say this bracha tomorrow morning, Okay, we have Shia and Shul at 5.30. So I get up at 5.11, my clock is set, because I try to make my little YouTube videos before. So it's about 5.18 that I say, So I got to do a lot of work to try to say it while I'm awake. That's the first goal, not to go back to sleep. But whatever situation each one of us is in, to say this, bro, every brother the Kavana, but now I'm hoping, my goal of the Shia was to take one word and understand it. Sarich. Why does he make a big thing? He doesn't say that with every halach. Oh, there is something unique that in the morning, the Be'er should be a chavaya. It should be an experience. It should not simply be one of the hundred brachas that we say every day. It's different. It's different. It's mom is thanking God over the greatest gift he ever gave to mankind. So it should be just different orientation. I'm hoping by talking about this for all of us, it's like a paradigm change. Like, well, tomorrow morning, this is going to be an experience. Maybe I don't normally open the sitter for brachos. Maybe I'm going to open the sitter. Maybe I'm walking around just doing things. And then this bracha, I'm going to give different intent. Whatever it is, each one of us maybe has some Kabbalah, except like, we're going to make this bracha different because he makes it different. Anyway, question. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That's why the rule in, in the shul, and anyone ever calls me, the rule number one, if they ever call me, they say, I'm sorry for bothering you. You're not allowed to say that. Sorry for you calling up with a question. You want to discuss Torah together? Sorry. It could be right now in the middle of shiz. I can't answer. Okay, fine, but sorry. What a dream. What a dream that uh, I'll go ahead and talk Torah together and, and search. Hashem, mm-hmm. together. It's an amazing dream. So then I tell the person, now they say sorry. So they say, oh, I'm sorry. I say, no, no, no. And then we spend the next 30 minutes saying, yeah, they say, oh, can't get out of the loop. Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> what? <laughs> Speaking about good old fun humor, right? You don't get better than that. Correct. So anyways, that's what I want to talk about today. Finish our little series on Davening. I thought there's no better way than to finish up on really the beauty of the Torah and the beauty of Be'er HaSatorah. It is just amazing. My son's Yeshiva Yaakov, who you know, he's been learning for 12 years in Yeshiva in the old city, and what's its name? 
It's a gorgeous name for yeshiva. Maybe that's why he just can't leave. He keeps staying there. It is. It's a gorgeous yeshiva too. It's just amazing, amazing, amazing. But uh, it's a perfect name for yeshiva. It is. And that's it. So we have the greatest gift that Shem gave us. And we have a moment each morning to stop. Say thank you, Hashem. Praise Hashem. So I slacht to all of us. Okay, so that was a little series of davening Shema Brachos, and this Shema will continue. Oh, yeah, so just to finish, excellent question. I thought maybe if I just keep talking, you forget about it, because I don't know the answer.